Welcome back to the BDGE Dynasty Fantasy Football Channel. This is our first live stream, uh, you know, acapella, I guess you could say. We are streaming from three different locations. Andrew and Adam will be in the house in the BDG headquarters tomorrow to film, you know, the next four or five videos that go out as group podcasts over the next couple of weeks. But uh, we recorded last week and we lost two of the audio files. So we said, you know what? We're not just going to give up on the audience. We're not going to have them go contentless when they need it the most. So we strapped up, we tucked in, and we are now here live streaming from all over the country for y'all, ripping a little Dynasty Q&A. So we've got Tony manning the production behind the scenes right now. He'll put comments, he'll put questions, he'll see what y'all are yapping about so we can get a temperature and a feel for what y'all want to know at this point in the offseason. Dylan, my guy. What's going on, baby? Hello to everybody out there. Make sure you're subscribed if you are new here, of course, if you're watching it afterwards. And we are going to start this segment, this live stream off with uh, a little trade action that happened in one of Tony's leagues. Tony held me uh, hostage and said, I'm not running the live stream unless you guys discuss my trade and tell me that I won the trade. So here we are. He gave up the 112 for Javonta Williams, straight up. So I think this is a good conversation starter in the sense that like, we could talk about moving rookie picks for veterans or guys that you think are going to produce for you right now. So I guess my first question, Tony, uh, league settings, anything in particular? Uh, half, PPR. half PPR, super flex? Half PPR, super flex. We got a real, real vanilla type beat out here. Okay, so... When you see the 112 being given up, you know, you're talking about that that turn spot where we've seen a lot of good rookies go in previous years. You know, that's like the Justin Jefferson zone. That's where a lot of rookies kind of go to die. The Michael Pittmans, the T. Higgins, where they're not quite those like elite prospects, or at least we don't think they are yet. So they fall there because we're super unsure about them. But Javante Williams feels like a huge <laughs> Javante Williams feels like a uh, a player that is a nice little buy low coming off of a year, you know, once removed from the ACL. Um, where are you guys at with this? I've been yapping for about four minutes already. Somebody say something to me before I pass away. Say something, yeah, I'm giving I mean, up on you. Say something, <laughs> you I'm giving Next. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first thought was, where is your team, Tony? Are you more of like a competitive roster? Are you, I mean, where are you at? Because my first thought is I really am not buying running backs in – early or late February, early March, if I'm not a contending roster. Really, I'm not trying to, to buy Tony wants to deal. talk so bad. Hey, He's like Andrew, at the chair having a, an absolute meltdown. Like, how do I get onto a mic right now? <laughs> Andrew's like trying to talk about his team right now. <laughs> Andrew's Tony. like, here's a trade that I offered for you. Yeah. This was, if this was my this team, was this, is this is what I would do. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. I can hear you. Okay. All right, sweet. Here, here's my explanation for it. I have five. This was one of my five first-round picks that I have. My team, outside of quarterbacks, is garbage. I need receivers, tight ends, running backs. So my thought process was, I don't want to take five swings in the first round of a rookie draft because you're bound to strike out on some of them. So my thought process was, I'll just secure, I'll just secure Javante Williams, a guy who I feel pretty good, I know what he is, and kind of just move on, you know? Just take the take the nice double there. Not going to strike out. And, I, you know, I needed I needed young players. That's my thought process. Okay. All right. Andrew, now that you have all the information, give us the right answer. I would have held the 112 and probably traded it at a later date, or I would have probably got it. I, I'm not a big Javante guy. I will just say that right now. Like, I used to like Javante a lot more when he was coming out, but – Due to kind of how his career has went at this point, I feel like he's a uh, middling running back too. I really see. I mean, do you guys see him potentially being a running back one? I don't really see that. Uh, like like top twelve. Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely in the range of outcomes. It's probably not what I would bet on if I'm betting right now. But based based on the the context that Tony gave me. Right now, Andrew, let me ask you: with what you know today, or, or guess lack there of information with this running back class. 
he basically says he doesn't have a running back, and at the one twelve, he might be reaching for one. What do you What do you think about Javante Williams versus the running backs in this class right now? If you were trying to go win, um, I think that there's maybe one or two running backs in this class that I would prefer over Javante uh, if they get day two draft capital. And I think we all feel like there's going to be some guys that get day two draft capital. So I think that's where I would lean. But I also feel like if I'm buying a running back and my team needs a running back. I would probably be looking more in like the James Conner territory or things like that, where I could give up a second round pick instead of my first round pick and get a guy like that. That's going to give me production. Javante would be in that. uh, He'd be in the discussion for the top tier though. Like, I don't think there's anyone that would argue that like he wouldn't be amongst the top running backs, which is not like a huge statement given the, the weakness of this class a little bit. I will say though, Javante, this is one of the reasons that I like Jonathan Brooks, right? And everyone's, uh, or there are people that are skeptical because he's coming off the ACL. And this is why Javante was uh, an interesting prospect to me still because he came in so young, right? He came in so young. He's had a season. He's had an ACL tear season. He's had a comeback from ACL tear season. And now he's still just like 23 years old. So for me, it's not like he's 25 or 26. And we're like, ah, the ghost of Javante Williams is, you know, he is what's going to haunt us for the, for the time being. I actually kind of think my biggest concern with Javante at this point is the Broncos team right and I don't know that I really uh look deep enough into like what they're doing this offseason but we were having a conversation in the office yesterday about teams and their like odds to win their division and the Broncos are tied for the second worst odds in the NFL to win their division at plus 1500 or 15 to 1 so they're projected to be one of the worst teams in the NFL which shouldn't be a surprise and so you start kind of like peppering in I like Javante as a talent still but like we don't know what's going on with the quarterback position there. Uh, we don't know. They're getting rid of their playmakers. It almost feels like they might be in a full season reset. Like this might be a full reset season for them, getting rid of some of their defensive players, uh, looking for the quarterback maybe next year, getting rid of Sutton, getting or getting rid of Judy, probably soon to get rid of Sutton. It, it doesn't feel like they got a lot going on there. And I feel like Sean Payton's wanted to work in multiple running backs at this point, where it's Jaleel, whether, you know, whoever the fuck it might be. So, um, Javante redraft hate it this year, but I don't mind like the buy. I probably would have rather have given up a, an early two, two, three, two, four ish. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think I think as far as like the only the only thing I have a problem with or would disagree with possibly with making the trade is just the leverage, like using the one twelve and the other first that you have to try to go get something better than Javante. But I think like if you stay there and make the pick, you could make the case that Javante is as good or at least in the mix as any of the running backs in this class. So, like, I'm, I'm 50-50 on it. I, I think probably the way I play, I would rather hold the pick a little further out and see if I can maneuver differently. But, like, Javante Williams, the talent, I think is still really good. But to your point with the situation, um, th- there could be not many worse situations in football this year. Uh, the whole rust thing, like, wasn't good, not a good experience. But, man, I, it could be worse this year by a good bit. So where do you guys think is, like, the best time of the offseason to buy veterans? Because I, to be honest with you, the more and more I've played Dynasty, the more I'm okay going into rookie drafts, like without a first round pick. I like moving first round picks for veteran players, especially if my team is ready to compete or even like a year off from competing where I think like one or two players could actually put us into competition mode. I'm fine. I'm fine moving away from any like first round picks. Um, So in terms of like different points of the off season, we have post combine, we got pre NFL draft, we got post NFL draft. We got like the summer. You guys find there's an ideal time to start moving rookie picks. I mean, right, right about now you're starting to get that like peak feel where people are just buzzing about the class. I, I think once we get actually the, the information as far as landing spots, you're probably looking at a very big peak window there. But I, I would say as soon as the combine hits officially, you have like rookie euphoria just gone wild. And, that's why I like to have rookie picks, honestly, Nick. Even if I'm contending, you can kind of move them for inflated value into veterans right now. Um, you don't have to actually make the pick and have rookies on your squad. What does Andrew Tutu say? I don't know. It's yeah. crazy. He's not. There's nothing know, coming man. out of his mouth right now What's for the first time ever. Let's be honest, boys. I, I lost audio for a second there. I put it in our guest chat for Tony to see. I don't know if he saw it, but I lost audio, so... Give me the question. I'll yap away. <laughs> uh, I said, uh, wh- what's the best time of the offseason to start to trade away rookie picks for veterans? Yep. 
I think I think right now. Um, well, well, between now and the NFL draft, I think any time after the NFL combine and before the NFL draft, or even to the point where you're on the clock in the NFL draft, I think that period is when picks are going to have the most value. Yeah, Mars. basically what I said. Yeah, fair. All right, producer, um, let's get some questions up here. Come on, Tony. <laughs> no dimes. Jack Peterstein, one quarterback league. I have the 102, 5, 7, but need running backs. Worth it to trade any of these four running back pieces. I mean, you have a ton of ammo. I would say I'll probably be holding on to the two just because uh, you have to love Marv and Malik. And if you're a Rome guy, cool, you got him as well. Five and seven, that's enough firepower. I feel like you can get a really good back, though. I can't see the question. I, I just see I just see Big Nicholas yeah. in the chair. I can't see the question. Oh, really? That's yeah. weird. Yeah, I can't see it either. I can't okay. even see. Well, either. he has he has the one, two, and the five. He has the one, one oh two, five and seven. Okay. In a one quarterback league, he said, "Is it worth it to trade any of these four running back pieces?" <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you you probably prefer to trade the latter of those, the one oh seven, the one oh five. I think that's what you said, Nick. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be okay with that if I'm getting a, a a pretty decent running back. But there's there's plenty of guys at the receiver position, especially at the five pick, that I'm probably comfortable there. The 107, I'd be much more willing to to maneuver for a running back and and a veteran in this class versus the 107. Well, who would you be looking at then? Like, um, obviously, we want to move the 107 as opposed to the 102. But where are we? You know, what are we targeting here? Uh, let's pull up. Uh, let's pull up a list here. I mean, I'll I, give you. I'm, I'll give you I'm, some. I'll give you some options, and you tell me whether or not you'd rather have the 107. All right, um, would you rather? I like this. Let's say David Montgomery. 107. 107. This is a one-quarterback league, too, so keep that in mind. Um, yep. James Cook. 107. Hmm. Close, but I think I'll probably still say the 107. That's pretty close, though. Rashad White. Me. I'll take White. I think I'll take White as well. Okay, yeah. so that's yeah, that's about that, where that we're looking range. at then. Yeah. Yep, I like that. Okay, so you could try to move those, and I think if you package a five and a seven, then you probably get on the better side of those, and maybe maybe you can grab uh, maybe like an ETN if you package up the five and the seven and kind of see where it goes uh, from there. Yeah, yeah. See so if you can get a guy like ETN, Kyron, someone in that range, a little bit a little bit north of those guys. I I could go for that. Are you, are you trading for Kyron right now? <clears throat> in one quarterback, I think I would be. Yeah. Um, he, f he feels well, like a needle mover in those types of leagues for sure. Definitely. Like super flex. I'm probably not trading for him because like he's a third round startup pick in super flex leagues. That just seems crazy. That's to me. crazy. But in one, in one quarterback, when you take all those, uh, you know, super flex options out of it, like Kyron's probably a top 20 option, 24 options. So yeah, I'm, I'm moving a bunch of picks for Kyron. If I had to the one, the five and the seven, I would move for Kyron in that league. Both of them. Okay. Yeah, I think I would honestly. In one quarterback, it's all about basically having studs at the skill players, right? That's what the name of the game is. I wonder if you can move the five straight up for Kyron Williams, honestly, because like I guess I don't play in any one quarterback dynasty leagues, but yeah, when you right. hear 105, it has a lot of like punching power behind it, you know? And I wonder if it has the same juice in one QB leagues where like obviously right. the player is not going to be as good. You're not going to get as good of a players, but like it's almost like a name value thing where it's like, oh, the 105 for Kyron feels good. For sure. Let me ask you, uh, you. You're the truther. Adnan Mitchell or Kyron Williams right now? That's about the 105 conversation. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is interesting. Um, <laughs> I think I'd probably take Kyron. a boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Mitchell, but in one quarterback, he's going to have to really hit closer to – like, he don't have to hit the C.D. Lamb ceiling, but he's got to hit a lot closer to his ceiling to become a yeah. difference maker in that format. So I'd be willing to make the pivot. All right, next question. 12-team uh, super flex. He's got the 101 and the 102. Ooh. He's got uh, T-Law and Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Do I take Caleb or I trade a pick for someone? Um, so this is this is like we could probably more gen, more so generalize this question. I think the uh, the energy behind it is like I'm pretty good at QB, but I got the 101. You know, am yeah. I taking Caleb here or am I moving him out for a haul? Which I feel like there's probably a lot of people that relate to this question. My thing here though is he said T Law, he said Deshaun Watson. One, 
I don't even know if I feel like super, super comfortable about either of those dudes being like high upside players at this point in their career or at least going forward for the next like three or four years. Secondly, it's not like you named three or four starting caliber quarterbacks and in a super flex league, like I definitely want at least three options and I'd probably rather have Caleb than these guys at this point. So like I'd rather not trade Caleb. I'd rather take Caleb and then maybe try to package one of those guys later on in the season or something like that. So uh, I, I don't see a lot of a lot of room for me personally moving off of the 101 or Caleb Williams, but maybe the 102 is a different story, but I'd also just probably take both those picks. To, to your yeah. point, I think what I would be doing is in this scenario, I'd be taking the 101 and atta- seeing if I, if I attach the 101 to T-Law, Nick, what can that get me at quarterback? To go to yeah. your point, can I, can I get to the elite range? Can I, can I throw somebody an offer like that, that that they can't say no to? And then at 102, let's say you get Jalen Hurts, who's a little bit discounted right now, right? Now you got Jalen Hurts, Deshaun Watson, and you you go ahead and take at that point Marv or who, whoever's there at one hundred two. Yeah, that's probably that probably what I'd be looking to do first. I like I like that strat. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. You're pretty smart. <laughs> I think Are you bu- in a in another C4s direction, you now? go to dude. I, I need to man. I, I'm still on the old school Red Bull man. You know. Oh right damn, that's disgusting. This, this is Ohio. Yeah. Nick <laughs> Nick told me he'd never come to Ohio, but I get him to come on stream every now and again. Not not a chance. <laughs> I think another direction that you could take this trade to is if you felt like you were really strong at quarterback, which, uh, again, to echo your point, Nick, t and, and Watson don't make me feel super confident at my quarterback position. But if you did feel very confident in those guys, you could even maybe take 101, move it back into that 103, 104 range, still take one of the quarterbacks like Drake May or Jaden Daniels and get some extra value thrown in on top if you felt like you were that good at it and you didn't really care which of the top quarterbacks you could get. And then maybe you're getting some extra value thrown in to just keep adding depth to your roster and get you better. Did he say how many starters he uh, in this league? It doesn't say. It says 12-team super flex is all. Uh, it's yeah, probably I mean, standard, 10 maybe. Yeah, if it's if it's 9 or 10, like the, the more standard formats, if I have the 101 and the 102, I'm looking to execute the fact that I have that high leverage into a difference-making player. So n- not that I don't typically agree with the, the trade-back strategy, but what I don't want to do is end up getting Drake May and add that to Deshaun Watson and to Trevor Lawrence and not really feel like I have any clear direction on who I'm starting and kind of just yeah. be more muddled. Like I'd rather take this opportunity where I have this high leverage and, and trade it higher into a consolidation trade. Yeah, no, I I agree with that because then it's like you have so much leverage right now. You look back in five months and be like, damn, I really fucking executed poorly on that looking back. And now I still am left with a bunch of question marks. It's like, cool, I won in value, but I didn't actually do anything that executed in terms of making my team like better on a week to week basis. Yeah, it's like the Bears right now, right? You got the one on one right now. You you don't take Caleb. You don't take your guy like you may never get that chance again. So in in all fairness, though, we if we would have said this last year and we would have said, oh, you could just trade back and take CJ, like you probably were the winner of that deal. And of and you would have sat up there and picked Bryce Young or you would have sat up there and you would have picked Anthony Richardson. And I think at this point, even though we like Anthony Richardson, probably not so much Bryce Young right now, you probably just want CJ Stroud. Sure. But I mean, at the same time, what if what if you got Bryce Young in the trade back? Like CJ Stroud, the best quarterback, like the top 10 quarterback, isn't always going to be the third one off the board in the class, right? Like, right, right. So I guess my question is not necessarily that. I, I'm, not even, I, I'm not even saying to take Caleb. I'm saying use that 101 and go get yourself a top five quarterback and add like T-Law mm-hmm. to it. Go make a, a – Yeah, no, I like what you said there. T-Law plus the 101 probably gets you into a, a really – uh, high, t- it might even it, like you could get CJ Stroud for that, you know, if you thought that that was like equal value for it. you, could go for the Jalen Hurts, you could go for any of those guys, and now you're like, okay, I have zero questions at my QB one spot. Yep, I, I think I think when you throw an offer like that at somebody, they they're immediately looking and thinking, no matter who they have, no matter who you're talking about. So just something yeah. to keep in mind. That's where I'd be going. Yeah, I got you. Um, I go Wumbo says the 107, 108. And Pickens for Herbert and Zamir in a 10-team super flex full PPR. So you got the 7-8 Pickens, Herbert, Zamir. So when we're looking at this, it is super flex. So we're getting into that tier of, you know, Brock Bowers, JJ, Brian Thomas-ish. Uh, and we got to think 
George Pickens probably got a little bit of a boost now, obviously, with Russ coming over, as well as Deontay Johnson departing. We look at the other side. Josh Jacobs obviously left the Raiders situation, so Zamir gets a boost for the time being. So, you know, we've got a lot of players getting a lot, a lot of boost action here. So I guess, um, how, how are we feeling about this? Man, in, in 10 team, I think I want that three that, that three side. Like, in 10 team, the quarterbacks tend to be a lot more easily acquired. And Herbert right now, I'm a little worried as being a like true hammer in that format. And I think that you get three receivers um, that could be, you know, starting caliber players. I'd probably take that package right now in 10 team. 12 team would be a totally different conversation, though. What do you think, Andrew? You're, I don't you're know, man. I, I you, got a, like... you got a bunch of 10 teams, so you tell me. I actually don't play in any 10 team. Yeah, well, when I started playing, I was playing in a bunch of 10 teams. So, like, I just have a lot of those by default. But I mm -hmm. think when uh, when I look at this, like, I, Justin Herbert still has been a pretty big difference maker in your 10-team leagues at the quarterback position. It just feels like the 107, the 108, I, I mean, as much as we like this class, as much as we say this class is deep, you know, maybe it's a, it's a Brock Bowers and a J.J. McCarthy. If you could trade... Brock Bowers and JJ McCarthy today as as the unknown rookies for Justin Herbert. It feels like I'd just much rather go with the Herbert side in a super flex league. But I think really what it comes down to is I think this is a fair deal. I don't know if I have a clear winner for me, but I prefer to have the elite quarterback in my super flex league. No, that's that's fair. I think I would lean the the three player side as well. I don't I don't think it's like a huge win, but I, I would say though, it does feel like you're getting three players immediately that will like occupy almost half your lineup, right? Because you're going to get two wide receivers that are really nice. You're going to get George Pickens, who is also 23 years old, coming off an 1,100-yard season and is, and is going to be in a better situation this year than last year, and it's full PPR. So you might now add, you know, you might lose Herbert, who's 20 points a game, but you're almost adding 40 to 50 points into your lineup like that. And I I feel, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, I guess it would depend yeah. on what you're – quarterbacks are after that you know I, I don't know if we're dealing with like uh, a team that has like Russ and, and Bryce Young and and like a, a mishmash of those types of QBs uh, so that would obviously factor into it but as far as Herbert yeah like 10 team it does make it a little bit less like feel like I need to have him on my team feel like I need to get like the the 101 or 102 back or like trade him straight up for a, uh, a stud here so I think I, I I think I give a slight lean to the pick side as well yeah, I mean, I, I could see you making the trade if you if you needed like a quarterback. That was the big thing you needed. You had a bunch of receivers. I could see you making it, but for me, typically, I'll just take the uh, the three the three side in this ten team league. Yeah, we got another trade question from Mister Carl Carl Bean twelve Carl team Bean. super flex start ten. That's for you, Adam. I know you love to know uh, yeah. how many players are starting in our, Four, our roster. Twelve team start ten. Yep, twelve team super All flex. Right. We start ten. He says, would All you right. trade? Chase and the 105 for Mahomes. And mm. I I like would almost just stop the question there and say yes, probably. Mahomes is going to be like the 101 or 102 for the next eight Mahomes years consecutively. He says, I have Dak and Bryce at QB. Chase, Tyreek, Olave, Nico, Ayuk, London, Addison at wide receiver. Still have the 107. I kind of feel like he asked his question just to flex on us. Yeah. Like when you have Tyreek, Olave, Nico, Ayuk, London, Addison at wide receiver, I think you're okay getting rid of Chase there. Dude, yeah, I can't even so see it. I'm just listening. Position. Tony, I'm is that your burner? Reed, <laughs> Fucking burner, brother. And I'm like, holy crap, this team is loaded. I, I would do that. I would say this. If if your wide receiver room wasn't so stacked, I could see maybe being a little more hesitant. But I just – my rule in general with Patrick Mahomes is if you have an opportunity to get him, which feels like relatively fair value – you just, you just make that plunge. Like, Patrick Mahomes is worth it. So, especially knowing you have Ayuk, London, Tyreek, all these guys on the back end, I'm making that trade for sure. For sure. Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, in the same, I'm in the same boat. I just feel like the wide receiver room is so deep that in a start 10, you're going to be able to play three, four, five of those guys every single week, even without chasing the lineup. And just upgrade the quarterback. Why not? Because right now you're starting Dak and Bryce. So, you know, being able to start Holmes and Dak, that would be a lot bigger of an upgrade for your lineup than replacing Chase with like an IU. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing about the 105 that is 
like my only even slight hesitation is a lot of times in a 12 team, you're going to be looking at that could potentially be neighbors. Now, all of a sudden it's like chasing neighbors. Oof, that feels like some heavy hitters at receiver, but you have so many receivers. I'm okay. Basically making that pivot. If you didn't have that depth at receiver, I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. He, he's like, it's just a good build all around. Adding Mahomes to that roster is going to make you an elite team there. So That's you have an serious. opportunity to, yeah, anything below like four to five firsts, you have the opportunity to trade for Mahomes is something that I feel like you got to do there. Zeke Leak, 12 team super flex, start 11. 106 or Drake London? Straight up. Straight up. Oh, that, this is a good one now with the, the, the cousins. Um, Free agency. What do you think, Andrew? And I, w- I want Nick's opinion on this first. Mr. Atlanta himself got the helmet right there. Mm, hi. Yeah. See? You, said, you said you wanted to his opinion first, activity, right? but Yeah. Well, both you guys go, and then I'll, I'll go. There we go. Drake Let's London. The helmet on. Drake, London, Drake London, my goat. We got Kurt coming over to, <laughs> to ruin my fucking, my, my self-confidence and everything that I stand for, probably. On paper, it's great. Control. It's not out of control. I'm in control. On paper, this shit is great, right? Kirk's coming over, and uh, he should dice up defenses now, right? We we add Darnell. We add Rondell Moore. We got Pitts. We got London. It all feels really good. I'm still nervous about it, but I'm not really nervous about Drake London as a player. Uh, he's showed me enough. He's another one who came in really, really young, so even going into his third season, we're talking about a dude who has good experience and – Looking at almost all the numbers outside of just like, uh, it, when you look at the raw numbers, it's not like fantastic because most of them are not efficient. Like the passes that he's getting were not uh, on target. You know, we're dealing with Desmond Ritters of the world. If Drake London gets on target type uh, targets this year, you know, if, if he gets catchable targets this year, he's going to be a player that jumps up really, really quickly. And there's a lot of guys who I think kind of like sit in the middle ground of like Chris Olave, where we're going to be like, okay, we need him to take that next step to to become an elite receiver. And they might just sit at the 1,100, 1,200 yard mark, where I kind of feel like London has that ability to, if Atlanta ends up being a team where Kirk Cousins throws 30 touchdowns, Drake London is probably on the back of 12 to 14 of those. Like, you know what I mean? Like he becomes the guy who becomes the red zone threat. He becomes the guy who's like the deep threat. He becomes the Nico Collins of our offense for the most part, right? In a 1,300, 1,400 yard, 10, 12, 14 touchdown season, I think is coming at some point during his rookie contract. So when I look at Drake London, I mean, at the 106, you're comparing him to the worst player of that first tier. And what's going to happen is one of one of those top six players is going to land in a spot that makes him the sixth player there, right? And it's fun to be like, yeah, we, we like Rome and he's our 106. But realistically, like if Rome... Go, New England trades back, and then they're the one that takes Rome at like 11. We're like, fuck, okay, this is not really that juicy, and I think you'd probably rather have Drake London there than you'd rather have the worst player of that first tier. So London, I mean, he's a talent, bro. He's he's a beast. Um, I don't think there's anything that points to another direction for that answer, but um, I'm open to I'm open to hear you guys yap about it. Yeah, Go ahead, I Andrew. mean, you went, you went in detail. I think to me, I think Drake London with – the upgraded quarterback with Kirk Cousins here. I, this is a guy who I liked more as a prospect than I like even Odunze as a prospect right now. And that may be a hot take to some people who really like Romo Odunze, but I think London was better coming out of USC than Odunze is coming out of Washington. When you look at the question marks that are about Odunze, like we just don't know where he's going to be, kind of similar to what you're saying. Like it, I'll, I'll just take Drake London, man. I think he really has the, uh, I think top 12 is in the ceiling and in the range of outcomes for him this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. I, I think the way I'd put it is this. Drake London in a new situation with Kirk Cousins, I think he has the upside. I'm not going to say he's going to hit it, but I think he has every bit of the upside that we're probably looking for realistically of a Chris Olave that, that Nick mentioned, but a quarterback that can get the ball to him. And honestly, probably not far off from a guy like Garrett Wilson. So I think upside-wise, this is a season where Drake London could take off. Um, I, I, I want Drizzy probably here. Before knowing if it was Kirk Cousins, I would have probably just taken the 106, that liquidity, mm-hmm. and um, seen if I could move it for something else. But right now, 106 or London, or, I'm sorry, London or the 106. Yeah, I'm taking uh, I'm taking Drake here. Yeah, I agree. And I think at this point, like everything we have seen and everything we quote unquote know about Drake London as a professional wide receiver at this point, I think it's pretty much needs to be thrown out the window because 
Desmond Ritter is not in town anymore. Taylor Heineke is not in town anymore. This is a legitimate upgrade for Drake London. We all we all hope. Wesley, he said, what's the value difference in Barkley and Jacobs in a 10-man PPR Superflex? So straight up, we're just saying Barkley or Jacobs in a PPR league. So Barkley obviously goes to Philly. He gets that three years, you know, close to 40 million. We got Jacobs going to the Packers as Aaron Jones departs. That was more of a uh, almost like a one-year contract when you look under the hood. Yeah. And to me, that kind of signifies everything that we need to know about it. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, Adam, you're kind of manning the rankings right now for BG up on BG.co. Where do you have Barkley as opposed to uh, Jacobs and Dynasty? I'm, I'm assuming Barkley's way higher. Yeah, he's higher. Um, I definitely going to go through. Value is higher. I'm, I'm definitely going to go through and probably do another set of come overs. But like, I actually just bumped. I say this: I bumped Barkley into the tier um, that's that Jonathan Taylor's in, which for me is the like second tier. I, I think Barkley in this situation, the only nitpick you could have is: is this tush push going to be around, and is this not going to be the highest uh, touchdown ceiling for him? But we saw Jalen Hurts actually check the ball down to DeAndre Swift quite a bit last year. I, I think Barkley in this situation, this type of offense with all those weapons, and you can't really just key on quads like you have in the past. I, I think when I look at running backs in more of a one- or two-year window, Barkley's every bit of what you want in a running back, period. Not, not that Jacobs is in a good situation, by the way. Like Him going to Green Bay I think is a big upgrade for him. The way that Love looked in that offense, the offense as a whole, but he doesn't have the pass catching prowess in PPR. I don't believe that uh, that quite does Barkley. So I'm going to take Bark there. Yeah, by, I by agree. Margin. Yeah, I, I I disagree. I think I'm going to be taking Barkley here. And and really, if you watch the video that I did yesterday, I talked about all of these free agent running back landing spots and like some of the ramifications that could happen because of this. And uh, when I was digging into the rushing metrics of Josh Jacobs. There, it's there's nothing in there that's really a red flag, but there are a couple things that kind of made me look at his season in 2023 and okay, maybe like put what? up a yellow give, flag. Give us some of the yellow card examples. What do you got? Yeah, just a lot of his his efficiencies dropped to the point of where he was like close to or outside of the top 50 running backs in the NFL. And I can pull up those. Uh, let me pull those up real quick so I can reference right. them while I'm talking about them. Um, but really, it it just showed enough, and I think we can kind of attribute some of this to the fact that he was in a bad offense. You know, it was Aiden O'Connell and things like that. But also, it, when we see a running back start losing some of this, we also need to kind of pay attention to it because when that running back age cliff hits, it's going to hit and it's going to hit hard. Um, but his efficiency, so his true yards per carry, he was 63rd in the NFL with 3.3. His yards per touch, he was 50th in the NFL at 4.1. His juke rate, he was 13.3%, which was 53rd in the NFL. He was 31st in evaded tackles, 48th in breakaway run uh, breakaway run rate, and he had he was 36th in breakaway runs. So like a lot of the big play, big hitter type of metrics that we see out of a rushing running back, he was really not that good in a lot of them last year. And I think a lot of it was because of volume. Could he receive the same volume in Green Bay? Absolutely. But also, if I see those metrics kind of dip like that, it puts a yellow flag for me, and especially at his age where he's 26 years old. We know that age cliff is about 27. It, I don't know. It just There's some things that I would rather not see out of Josh Jacobs than that. I think what it comes down to realistically is is like uh, we saw Josh Jacobs for the first, what, two to three years, and he was, he was good, right? He was like – he was not average. He was above average and probably better than above average, you know, top 12-ish yeah. like on that borderline in terms of being an NFL running back. Then he had the unbelievable year. And then he had a shit year last year for the most part. So it's kind of like the law of averages, the way I'm looking at it. I don't think two years ago is who Josh Jacobs really is. I don't really think last year is probably who he is. I think he's more so close to what we saw the first two or three seasons where he's like bordering on the top 12 real life back. And then depending on the situation, how many passes he catches is going to be his upside and, and touchdowns and stuff. But I do think the Packers offense does um, – give him a ton of opportunity for fantasy points, right? We got Aaron Jones out of there. We got A.J. Dillon's a free agent as well. Like, they got nothing else on the depth chart, dude. And like and like I said in the beginning, he's on a one-year contract for the most part, right? And maybe they give him, like, a team option on the second year. But they're probably going to do what Ra uh, the Raiders have done and fucking ride him straight into the dirt. So all those types of touches. We haven't seen a Green Bay running back get workhorse touches in 
a really long time. It's always been split between Jones and Dylan and before him, Jamal Williams, and we're always been clamoring about like one running back getting it. And this is an offense you kind of want to attach yourself to. It's a pretty good offensive line. They consistently end up being in the top like 15, 12 of the offensive line ranking. So the Jacob signing is like a sneaky good spot for his fantasy value. But when we're talking about Saquon, he's a different type of beast. And now he's going from like the worst offensive line to one of the best, even after losing Jason Kelsey, like Saquon kind of makes up for some of that loss of, you know, maybe the center gets pushed back, but is there anyone better than making the first dude miss than Saquon Barkley, right? And I think he's probably a little bit of a problem solver for uh, the situation that they're going to find themselves in. So like Barkley to Jacobs, I think they're they're both probably closer to what they were in the beginnings of their career. And now they're just in new situations, but that would mean Barkley is like a whole tier, two tiers ahead. Jacobs is definitely a guy that I'm probably despite having like a nice one year redraft window where like if he if you're getting him in like the fifth round of redraft leagues love that but not a dude that I'm really trying to invest in at 26 27 in dynasty leagues yeah, yeah and I think even fair. too when you look at like Saquon Barkley last year he was in an equally as bad maybe even a worse situation than what Josh Jacobs was in and he outproduced him yeah. for fantasy football so like I, I think that tells you everything you need to know about the two players I, I think the big thing like you mentioned Nick I just the way for success I think that Jacobs is going to probably get in this offense, even with majority of the touches, is going to be if this offense is more like we saw the Packers in the second half of the year and there's some big touchdown upside for him. Um, we saw a couple years in Oak, or, uh, Vegas where he had um, 12 touchdowns, I believe. And if he's the bell cow for this offense and it looks like really efficient like it was with Love in the second half of the year, I could see some big touchdown upside for Jacob. I mean, that's I mean, that's where that's feeling comes. Yeah, that's like the juicy part of redraft is like Aaron Jones used to have years of 13, 15 rushing touchdowns alone. Then Dylan right. became more of the goal line back, and now he would have like he he's terrible, you know, at running the ball, but he would score six to eight touchdowns just because he's kind of there, and they give him the ball in the one yard line. But like the running back contingency there, the committee ends up scoring like 10 to 15 rushing touchdowns a year. And I, I legitimately can't name another running back on the roster, like Kylan Hill, maybe due to Torres. AC. Like I, I don't know anybody else on the roster. It's it's got to be all Jacobs. Patrick Taylor. Yeah, let's go. There you go. Uh, it's it's rough. It's uh, it's Josh Jacobs' season. The other thing too is like I, I almost wonder. I don't know how he operates, but if he if he feels like he's on a one year like prove it deal, actually, even though it's a looks like a four year forty eight, keep him hungry. I'll uh, be interesting to see how it turns out. But I want Barkley for sure in this conversation. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Well, what would you have to add to Jacobs to get Barkley? I guess because uh, he is asking about the value gap there, so it's like okay. Jacob yeah. Jacobs plus the Jacobs plus like the one eleven. Does that get you Saquon? I yeah, think you, I'd go even lower than that. To be honest, I think if it was Jacobs in like the two hundred two, I'd probably say that's enough to go up and get Saquon. I, I was gonna say you you throw at any first on top of Jacobs. Uh, I'll take the Jacobs side just because. If I look at it in a vacuum, both of them have had injury issues, and if one of them gets hurt, now you got the the extra insurance policy. But a top 15 pick, I think, is realistically what it is. Nick, you give me 203 or better, um, I'm going to take the Jacob side. You start getting more into that mid-second, I, I don't know for sure. I might just take the better back. All right. Ricardo Green, 12-team, one-quarterback dynasty league, full PPR. All right. One-quarterback, full PPR. We got Rashad White and Amari Cooper. For DeAndre Swift and the 105. Ooh. So we got DeAndre Swift moving to Chicago. Don't really love that move, but you also yeah. get the 105 there. And you got Rashad White and Amari Cooper. On the other side of things, it is full PPR. Um if I'm even like close to competing, I'm I'm probably leaning the Rashad White and Amari Cooper side. I like that they brought Baker back, they're bringing Mike Evans back. It should be relatively the same offense, which means Rashad White should be really involved, especially from a PPR side of things. Amari Cooper, you know, we're going to get 1,100 yards and 70 to 80 catches out of him. Swift, I'm, I'm not really sure what we're getting out of him. I don't know about that Chicago offense, man. Like, those, they still have Khalil Herbert. They obviously still have Roshan Johnson on his rookie contract. Um, it, my, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know how many passes he's going to catch there. And then the 105 in a one-quarterback league, again, nice, but I don't know, like, practicality-wise how, uh, how sexy that, that pick really is. Yeah, what do you think, Andrew? I think for me, I, I I do lean the Rashad White and the Amari Cooper side. Um, but with that being said, too, if if there's a way that you're a rebuilding roster or or something like that where you're not as good and you need to get a little bit younger, I could see the the value in getting the 105 and DeAndre Swift. But if I was in a rebuilding roster, I'd say I adding DeAndre Swift to my roster 
means that I don't really want to keep him anyways. I'd be looking to make a secondary move and flip him off of it. Yeah, I mean, this one, the 105 is what makes it interesting for me. So if you just told me in a vacuum right now, like remove Dynasty and you're talking redraft, like production, I, I think the Amari side is what, the one I would bet on. But the 105 is is interesting because, like, I'm just looking at the one quarterback startup that you could take a look at on, on South Harmon. So uh, you go to southharmonff.com forward slash ADP. You put in one quarterback with the startup picks. Like, even in one QB, Amari Cooper's going all the way down in the seventh. So the 105 versus like Cooper per se is at least a two to three round difference in that one quarterback range. The value side probably is, um, I don't love Swift situation either, but the value is probably on that 105 side. So if you think you can kind of make some moves accordingly to take that 105 and pivot up, I think there's probably a little more upside there. But if you just want to go production for next year, maybe even two, I want the Amari Cooper and the uh, Rashad White side. Dub. Caleb, we got a 12 team super flex start 11. Got Pervy Watson or Bryce Young? <laughs> Wait, Andrew, why don't you why don't you jump into some uh some Bryce Young talk because you just moved yeah. off of Bryce Young last night you said. And said he had some yeah. heartache over it. Yeah, I I feel like this feels like they're in the same tier. Uh 12 team mm-hmm. super flex. I think what I would like to do would probably I'm taking Watson. I'm taking Watson. There's something in me that's still like whispering like he's gonna be bad. Let's go. <laughs> like he's he's gonna recapture his form. I, I I lose hope by the day, but there's like until he breaks a fucking femur or tears his ACL again or like puts up a negative touchdown to interception ratio, I just feel like there's something that's gonna continue to push me saying Watson will refine eighty percent of his form. I I feel like that's where I lean to is Watson, but I just I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good probably with either of these guys. So I guess I'm just gonna. I guess I'll just lean Watson. Pervy Watson is what he's calling him. Did you just did you just get totally bullied into an answer you weren't gonna give? Is that what just happened? <laughs> no, I I was sitting here debating on whether I believe in Bryce Young with. Deontay Johnson and maybe a second round wide receiver or just go with Watson and Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. Now I, I, it's, it's, I think they're very similar. I do think these guys are in the same tier, but Mm -hmm. we've seen it out of Watson. We haven't seen it out of Bryce. That's what it comes down to. I mean, I, I think that right now, um, like Deshaun Watson is easily as low as he's ever been as far as value goes. Like realistically, just I look at I try to look at range of outcomes for players. Okay, let's say Watson doesn't actually have like he doesn't come back all the way back to form. He's not the old quarterback one Watson was. Like realistically, he's not probably going to play any worse than he has uh, in moments for Cleveland at this point. Like I don't think the value of Deshaun Watson really is going to get any lower. Uh, maybe a little bit of perception because, like, at pervy people are you know like to hate him because of the stuff off the field. But like he's he's at a probably the lowest he'll ever get to in, in dynasty. Roughly, Bryce Young right now is like betting on talent in a situation where we're hoping Deontay Johnson can just be a uh, feature piece for him because the the whole offense as a whole kind of still is in shambles. So um, I'll take Watson here, but. Uh, it's it's kind of gross, man. It's kind of gross. Both these guys. Yeah. Well, let's I, let's put it this way. Feels let's, good. let's say um, who who uh, gains the most steam from a good fantasy season. One of let's say one of them finishes top twelve, right? <laughs> let's say like they end up being right. QB eleven. Bryce. Who who jumps Bryce the most? Would. Yeah, I would I would agree. I would say Bryce. Is Bryce by well. leaps and bounds. If Bryce finishes after last season start. And how he was as a whole, and the hype that we had with him going ahead of, um, you know, CJ, and he's a top twelve quarterback in points per game in that situation. His, his value is going to go crazy. He'll be a third round yeah. starter. I think I think he'd be viewed almost exactly how Jordan Love is being viewed this off season. <laughs> yeah, probably, and that's yeah. So Jordan Love's a second round startup pick. I think easily. Yeah, he'd be I, a third I think that's where he could go. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like, okay, so now let's say Watson's a top twelve quarterback. Let's say he finishes as a back end quarterback one. I almost, I almost feel like Watson though needs to be higher than that. 
You know what I mean? Like go. that doesn't that's feel why, fair. That's why I wanted to say that. Yes, yeah. I agree. I, I would say like QB yeah. eight. I would say like if he finishes QB eight, but like maybe you don't feel as good. Like he he shrunk together maybe like two 37 point games because he uses legs and shit like that. So you're still not you're still not super bought into him. Like I, I still wonder where people are gonna feel with uh Deshaun Watson. I, I just feel like at I'm with you. the highest he could get to like where Dak Prescott is. I mean, yeah, that that and that's that's being He'd have to have a top seven, eight season like Nick saying or better. Like he'd have to be a difference maker. Um, yeah. Because like that, Dak is coming off. He just led the NFL in touchdowns for yeah. people that are wondering. Yeah. Like, so I guess the question now becomes like, how how much further down the rankings can Bryce finish? Where we still feel like okay, he's getting up. Like okay, Bryce finishes a QB fourteen. Do we still think he's moving up and up and up? He finishes a QB sixteen. Like. There yeah. might be an argument here now that, like, you know, when you think about it a little bit more practically, Bryce could be the better investment. So I, I would say um, Bryce Young has definitely a higher ceiling to reach if he hits it. I, I think the reality, though, is we, what do we expect? Like, what do we expect realistic expectations for Bryce Young to hit in production this year? I don't think many people are expecting him to produce, right? Yeah, probably like 30 fucking 300 yards in a good season. Like, I, like is I he, do is believe back that quarterback Bryce Young like, is going to be quarterback top 24. You, you think so? I think I think he can be top twenty this year. I really do. Like that's and and maybe this is me being a little bit more of a Bryce Young believer, just because I've been guilty of being the believer in the past. But I do think he can finish top twenty. It, it doesn't feel like it's out of the range of outcomes. I mean, well, top twenty is not like crazy high, by the way. Uh, but no, yeah, it's I not. Get you. But so it's you're... it's your QB. It's your it's your QB two in a super flex league in a ten team league. Well, sure. But I, my, my only point is I think that that would be him having a decent season too. So I, when we talk about him being a quarterback 12, he's totally exceeding expectations. Um, mm-hmm. I think that the floor for Bryce Young, if he has a really bad season, could be rough. That That's where I'm more so worried about Bryce is I think the floor is not safe. If, if he's a, Let's say he's like quarterback 26, 28 again. What what happens to his value? No, that's that's fair. There, there's, a, there's a path where like, Bryce Young literally sits on your – like, here, here's one way I'll put it. In Fade the Fetal, I took Bryce at either the 103 or the 104 last year, right? I needed yeah. a quarterback. I was starting Justin Fields, Baker Mayfield pretty much all year last year. So I need the QB3 or I need someone that could fill in at that QB2 spot. Bryce was, you know, supposedly going to be that guy for me. He didn't leave my taxi squad from August until the end of the season. He's still sitting right. on there right now. And there's a, there's a realistic path where I'm like, I don't know if I could use him again this year. Like, at, at what point am I going to put him into my starting lineup? Whereas Deshaun Watson, if he stays healthy for a full year, there's really not an out where he doesn't finish as like a top, I don't know, 18 guy, 16 guy or something like that, just because the floor is going to be high enough where uh, he'll he'll get there for you. So I guess there's arguments both ways, but there definitely is a path to where Bryce Young is literally unusable the entire year again. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Bryce Young has a much lower floor, which is crazy to say because Watson feels like he does not have a safe floor. But uh, Bryce definitely has more to gain than Watson. I think Watson probably is a – the reason I say it's kind of gross in general is w- Watson's like an unsexy safe bet, really. Like he's just – I think he's not going to go much lower than this. He could maybe get himself into that quarterback 15, very high end, probably like Andrew said, quarterback 12 discussion again. But um, I think realistically, if I'm just betting on production this year, I would take Watson over um, – Bryce Young pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and don't, don't, you know, I'm Brown's gear everywhere. So just let the homers and we see, <laughs> rain we, see we see where you're coming from. Uh, I, I almost offered... wore a Bryce Young jersey on the stream today. Ooh. That would really? Been, that would have been a good one for that question. Yeah. Interesting. He's offered the 104 and Jaden Reed for the 102. I just don't like the drop off from neighbors to a Dunze, but I am, but am I overthinking that? Okay, Ooh, so that be, seems like it is one a one. It yeah. seems, yeah, it's got to be a one QB league. Uh, I, I guess based on the way that the question was asked. So he's saying, and if it is a one QB league, I guess I'm confused who he expects to be drafted before Rome. You guys have any insight? Maybe on that? Bowers. I mean, if or Nick's Caleb, on the maybe? if Nick's in the league, maybe Adnan Mitchell. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's I, if someone's reaching, or yeah, they take a quarterback. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just say, um, let's say it's I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's say it's Brock, and he's ex- and here he's already talked to his league mates, and you know that Brock's going to be the one hundred and three, so he's going to get the Rome instead of okay. uh, Malik Neighbors there. So you're getting 
Roman Jane Reed versus Malik Neighbors is do you think there's any actual strategy to this question based on like the tiers for the rookies or is it just like a preference of player I I think the I think actually if you know truly that Rome is there it's a totally different conversation than if Rome's gone for me anyway uh in a one quarterback league like Ro Rome to me is not that far off from Malik so I'll take the plus of Jaden Reed but if you tell me that it's not going to be Rome and I'm in the I'm going to take a tight end all of a sudden or like I'm taking Brock Bowers or I'm going to take Brian Thomas Jr. or something like that. I, I'm not making that uh, that pivot to just pick up Jaden Reed. I'll take uh, one of the top three receivers in this class. Yeah, and and I'll say too, like your league mates might be telling you today uh, that they're taking Bowers at number three, but you know they see a Malik Neighbors pro day or something else or a Romo Dunze pro day and things like that, and they cha they change their mind. Landing spots change people's minds, and so I'm not moving back off of a guy that I feel very confident in off of the word of my league mates that's like mistakes 101 like i'm not doing that so right. I, I, it's not worth it's not it's not worth the Jaden reed to move back if you know on draft day you feel like you want to make that move then sure make that move on draft day i guarantee this offer will still be sitting there on your draft day but i'm not doing it today yeah so he did put in the chat saying brock was going to be the third pick but i agree i wouldn't take the word of your fucking league mates especially this far before you know what the landing spots could change everything really quickly draft capital can change everything really quickly um so it does sound I, like if you know that Rome's going to be four it comes down to like player preference if you think Rome and Malik are in the same tier then you probably don't move that I, I'll say this though um to the point like if you actually feel really confident and know that I I, I don't want to speak for you like you should you, you know or don't know but just to give context to this Sam Laporta just went out and absolutely destroyed the tight end position this year as a rookie Brock Bowers right now, go to keep, keep trade cut. He's like in the same breath as Sam Laporta before he's even stepped mm -hmm. on the field. Just to, like he's ahead of Trey McBride. It's it's banana land with uh, with where Brock Bowers' value is. So if you actually know that and it's guaranteed to happen or highly, highly likely, I'm okay with it. But if, if you don't know that, I'm not making this pivot based on the ability to get Jaden Reed, honestly, in one quarterback. Yeah, yeah. no, I feel that. Um, the acquisition cost of, of Bowers right now is ridiculous, almost to the point where like I feel like I won't have any Brock Bowers shares on any of my teams. Yeah, because you got to no, take him 103 not. in one quarterback. For the record right now, uh, if you go to one quarterback startup with the rookies in it, Brock Bowers, 403, and Roma Dunze, the 409 in um, startups yeah. and one quarterback. So there you go. Dub. Keep going down, Tony. There was a question from Quick Review that was like uh, – it was like that, but it – it included more players. Um, Quick yeah, review. Yeah, that one, actually. Quick nah. review says Tony, stop yeah. skipping my question. There Come on, go. Tony. Uh, yeah, do that one. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to read it off to you guys. You guys can't see the question you said, right? I can see I, it I on can the see slide. Nothing. I feel like Nick is almost like appeasing me by wearing this helmet. We're both kind of going into this blind now, so. <laughs> yeah, because I can't see the questions with the visor on. All right, he says, any advice on how to build this roster? So basically we're looking at um, like the, the core of his team and then he's got a bunch of picks. So maybe there's like a little bit of strategy about how to approach this 12 man, one quarterback league, man, hell people are playing in a lot of one quarterback leagues. Current Gross. stars are Brian Robinson. I got to tell you, you're in trouble if Brian Robinson is the star of your dynasty league. Jordan love <laughs> uh, a quarterback is the star of your one quarterback league and tank Dell. I have nine picks, the two, the eleven. 201, 202, 206, 208, 209, 301. So we're talking about the whole second um, round. He basically is in full rebuild mode. He doesn't have a lot of great players. He's got the two, the 11, and then like five second round picks, and then a couple early thirds as well. So we got a lot of picks. Is there a way that you would approach this? Because you're this at this point, you're in free, free fall mode, right? Like you got Brian Robinson, you got Jordan Love, but it is a one quarterback league, so he's not really valuable to me. Um, Adam, you see that 102 and I mean, you do have, you know, like 10 picks within the first two rounds. Are you making yeah. those picks? Or are you moving back that 102 to try to get like four more first? Like, what are you doing here? This is tough. Like in one quarterback, especially, right? For me, in Superflex, I like to, I typically lean the pick over the player when they're e equal because there's so much more flexibility with the Superflex. In one quarterback, it's the opposite. Um, I'd almost rather have players than picks. And that, just to give context, when you get to the point of where his second pick is, the 111, like, that's going in the range in this startup of Josh Downs. Like, you're talking about non-difference-making players, yeah. like, realistically, where you're drafting them. So, um, I'll just put it like this. You've you got a lot of 
this is a really, really long rebuild haul to do. You got a lot of work ahead of you. I'm probably going to have to, out of necessity, trade this Malik Neighbors pick or share into multiple shots. I'm probably looking to pivot out any of these picks that I can into 2025. I'm looking to just get value wherever possible, even if I can't live off of the like the rewards today. I think given what the roster is, like Brian Robinson, Jordan Love, and Malik Neighbors, I don't care what you're playing, and there's no chance that's getting you anywhere. So you got to just re- retool this thing for probably another year. So what, what's what would be your first move? Your first move is like you got the two of the eleven, a bunch of seconds. Are you are you offering the two for uh, two twenty five first? Are you offering the two for uh, a player equivalent of Malik Neighbors, even though you know Malik's not going to be the reason yeah. you know the rebuild works think, right now? I think I would like to probably um, unless I can extract like like I don't want to just take generic twenty fives that have a chance to be late. Like I don't want to be in that same situation next year, especially with right. that class. What I'd like to probably do is tear down. So can I go from this 102, let's say, to can I get to, you know, Zay Flowers, Tank Dell, uh, Michael Pittman, something Rasheed Rice, like in that range and get a plus. Like I'm looking to kind of like pick up different pieces along the way and do this with multiple shots because I don't want to just take generic first, which if these are all late. I just pissed away Malik Neighbors for, you know, 110, 111, 112 or something like that in the 25 yeah. class. Andrew, what do you think, though? That's, that's where I'm at. No, I, I'm – in the same exact boat as you like my first thought was you know just being straight honest it's not a good team and you have the 102 and being able to move that as like a very a very valuable asset for you and and gain more value long term like when i when i made my rebuild video for our channel it was just get as many shots or as many bites at that apple as you can when you're rebuilding trying to find those players that can be top 12 top 24 assets uh at some point and so I think just trading back and being able to get the value. My my thought was I, I like what you said, Adam, where you said you could go and get like a Zay Flowers and and something on top. I think even if you could go to like a 105, maybe 106, and and get a 25 first thrown in that you know is from a I'm roster that, that isn't too. very good. I think that's a that's a trade that I would make too. Just go back a couple slots and and get an extra first next year. It, it, the more the more and more I'm thinking about this too, right? I think what you have to do is be very attentive and you're probably I'm gonna make a lot of these picks, right? And I'm thinking about just go back, Nick, last year and think about um like Andrew, think about all the players that maybe had a window of production. And when that hype hits, boom, it is you gotta sell and that timing's gotta be perfect. Like when Jaden yeah. Reed's starting to have his explosion, okay, can I off Jaden Reed now at a peak value where I drafted him in the second round in this one quarterback league? I think you got to really probably time up a lot of these sales because you just look back and think about it. We're talking about Rondell Moore going to um, to Atlanta now and how his career is that. There was a window where Rondell Moore had that really big game in Arizona in his rookie season, and it, he was going for first everywhere in Superflex. So um, I think that's probably what I'm doing too. Any of these draft picks I hit that have little windows of peak and value production, like a boom, gone. I'm just trying to liquidate. Facts. Would you liquidate. tear down – Jordan Love and Tank Dell as well. I I would consider tearing down both of those guys as well. Um, t- what is, tank what is tearing down to Jordan do. Love going to do for you though in a one QB? I mean, get you more more players that can actually produce. He he's talking about his stars being three guys. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I get it with the extra shots. My only question, because I actually don't play. And I wonder this, like if if I have Jordan Love and I'm tearing down, like what is someone going to pay? Well, that's to what go I'm saying. From, what yeah, is, what would someone enough. realistically pay to go from? Like I'm actually asking, I don't know the answer. From I mean, maybe Jared maybe Goff because the rebuild Jordan is long. Maybe you go from Jordan Love to Bryce Young, right? Because there's a big tier gap there. You can wait the year or two to see if he develops, and then take like I don't know if the Bryce owner wants to give you a second like the 203 or the 204 or something like that maybe you could pile that on and see if you can wait that out because jordan love's not going to do anything for you right now yeah, yeah. i mean re- you, realistically you have, go ahead i was gonna say you also have that 111 the 201 202 like you could you could take a jj mccarthy or something there if they get a good landing spot and actually that's probably even too early for jj mccarthy and a one quarterback so yeah don't th- do it. there's there's shots that you could take if you went and t- uh, down tier to Bryce Young, where maybe you just add another guy to the bench, and one of these guys could be good for me down the road. It's just it doesn't matter who it is, but at least I get some value on it from or for now. Yeah, yeah I think I especially think- with that 209, 301, 302 
area, that's where you can grab some of those, like, I bet you like Drake May is available at like the 2-9 or the 3-1 or something like that. Yep, and, and, and in the rebuild that you have right now, honestly, like I'm looking to just extract any value I can out of the quarterback position. None of those guys are probably going to be like uh, – elite difference makers and one quarterback like basically you got to have a Hertz and Allen someone in that tier to probably make a difference otherwise it's just replaceable type stuff at QB it sounds like but, he uh, says I, I see his message in the chat he says Bryce Young is my backup so it sounds like Bryce Young is already on the roster oh all right so you're no longer in rebuild mode you're in win now then yeah so now you just trade Jordan Love and both. keep Bryce Young start them both yeah now now you just play Bryce Young and enjoy your championship <laughs> Go make Bars. sure you pair him with Deontay. You get that stack and it's over. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna cut it out there. I think we're about at the hour mark. Uh we ripped through a bunch of questions for y'all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We will be filming over the weekend a bunch of group podcasts. So let us know in the comments uh what kind of content you want us three to rip together going forward and then individually of course we're putting out videos every single day. Stay tuned for Adam's video tomorrow, which is a remind them. We're talking a uh, little bit of Dynasty flashcards. We're going back to the day of, uh, you know, multiplication, addition, school type days. Dynasty flashcards we're going to get into. What is What does that mean? Basically, like, all right, we're going to be convert. We're going to do conversion. So if you have a player, what is the rookie pick value of this player? What is the uh, mm. startup pick value of this player? Can you can you give me what the, the differences are? What do they equal? Got you. Okay, so we're going back to our Roots Elementary School. Make sure you subscribe to see that video tomorrow. Make sure you are subscribed to both Adam and Andrew's individual channels. Link down below if you can handle more Dynasty in your life. They've got it for you. Thank you guys for hanging out. We love you. Super Bowl runs through Atlanta. Hi. 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 You're...